Hello everyone, welcome to Friday. It's Friday. Happy Friday to everybody out there. December 8th. We are well into December. Christmas is around the corner. Uh, I'm kind of getting excited. My tree's up, decorated, all that fun stuff. Hope you're having a great weekend. I hope you get out there and see some lights and have some fun. It's going to be some nice weather for us. We'll talk about that in a second. But first, what's on the show today? Well, we've got a good one for you. Of course, we want to talk about Memorial Medical Care, Saddleback Memorial Hospital. And we have a cancer oncologist coming on the show talking about some of the latest treatments in oncology and cancer care and their team approach to have there over at the hospital. And then of course, no, no Friday would be complete without Sports Corner with Cole Young, so we'll have that as well. Let's take a look um, at what we have coming up. Stay informed, want to make sure you guys know, hey, it's the holidays, right? And you have this unwanted friend season and family coming to the gate. But for the folks you do want to let in the gates, well, you should try to use Dwelling Live. It's that app that makes sure that people can get in the gates and you can put the passes on there and all that kind of stuff. So don't keep friends and families waiting at the gate this holiday season. Use the Dwelling Live app. It's, it's free. It's uh, easy to use. And you can use it 24-7. You can go on there anytime and put somebody on there. So that's a great thing, too. Um, if you want to get some help in using that, uh, you can call the number there at the bottom of your screen, 949-597-4600. They'd be happy to walk you through how to set up the app and get it on your phone so you can have access to it all the time. Let's take a look outside while we're talking about getting access to gates and coming to the community. Who wouldn't want to come out here? It's beautiful. 66 degrees today and tomorrow. Looking a little bit warmer on Sunday as we warm up just a little bit, nice and sunny. And then we get back to some cooler temperatures for the rest of the beginning of next week. Should be a nice one for Southern California. They're dealing with lots of rain up in Seattle. They're dealing with snow out east. I'm liking it right here where we are. Let's take a look at our sunrise and our sunset while we're at it. Sunrise is 6.43 this morning. Were you up? Were you watching it? Uh, sunset is 4.43 this evening. And this photo is from Ben Givens, and he took that over, over at Corona Del Mar. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Love that tree. Love that little walkway over there. I don't think I've been over in that area before in Corona Del Mar, so I'll have to maybe take a walk down there myself. Okay, if you want to send us a great picture of the beach or your Christmas tree or your lights at your house, it's a great time to do that this year. Go take that picture and then send it over to us. Laguna Woods Village TV at gmail.com and put your name in there like Ben did and where you took the photo and we'll be happy to put it up in our sunrise and our sunset segment. That'd be great. Okay, well, we're all done there. Let's take a look at the meetings, and when we come back, we'll be talking about oncology care and cancer care at, with Memorial Care, Saddleback Hospital. Stay with us. Calling all parrot heads and land lovers to flock to the Performing Arts Center to get their tickets to Jimmy's Buffet, January 18th. The Boomers Club is thrilled to bring the number one Jimmy Buffett band on the west coast to Laguna Woods. Jimmy's Buffet is a wildly fun show celebrating the music and vibes of the man himself. It'll be all Hawaiian shirts and salt shakers as the band plays Buffett's hits among dancing sharks, tiki towers, and palm trees. The crowd will hear all the classics and new hits. The awesome seven-piece band features steel drums, congas, keyboards, and four-part Caribbean harmonies. And crowd participation is the hallmark of the show. Don't miss Jimmy's Buffet. Pet boarding and daycare reimagined in Laguna Woods. Smart Park is offering one month of unlimited free daycare to new clients that pass a temperament evaluation. Call today to redeem this offer and get started. Village Television presents Friday Films, only on Village Television. Fridays at 2 and 6 p.m. Foreign Films, Dramas and Comedies. Award-winning films, Romance and Mystery. Independent Films. Every Friday, only on Village Television. Breast cancer takes patients down paths they never expected, and Memorial Care Comprehensive Breast Center at Saddleback can help navigate the way. We provide multidisciplinary breast care services for the early detection, diagnosis, and treatment of breast cancer using state-of-the-art technology in a personalized environment designed to meet the needs of each woman.
And welcome back. I want to welcome Jacqueline Malkarad. Uh, Ed, I, I, I butchered the name, I'm very sorry about that. She's a hematology oncology specialist with Memorial Care Cancer Institute over at Saddleback Medical Center. Say your name for me one more time. I'm so sorry about that. Jacqueline Malikirad. Malikirad, there we go. I'll try to get that straight. So Jacqueline, um, welcome to the program. Um, tell us a little bit about your background. You, 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 your life began far, far away from here in Iran, right? Yes, I um, uh, grew up in Iran. Um, but, um, and I'm, I speak Farsi fluently, <laughs> but, there we go. but I had um, my medical education and uh, training all in the United States mm -hmm. um, because uh, due to religious discrimination and persecution, um, I could not uh, obtain a college education in Iran. Oh, really? Okay. Um, yeah, so I immigrated to the United States to pursue my dreams. Okay, and how was that process like? Is that just something you just kind of, you, uh, if you decide that you want to work in the medical field, a, a desired area, was it easy to immigrate or did it take a long time to kind of make your way over here? Um, well, I mean, I, I like to be in medicine for <laughs> the whole my life, um, but um, it was not that easy. A lot of work, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, entering medical school, uh, getting admission from them is a very hard mm -hmm. and competitive field. Um, but um, I was lucky, so. Yeah. And how did you pick oncology? What, what was it about oncology that kind of spoke you? You have internal medicine, you have oncology, and you have a, you have a triple, or are you triple rated or triple certified? That's correct. <laughs> so I mean, you, you've studied, done a lot of study here. What made you say oncology is kind of where I want to be? Um, well, you know, uh, oncology is a very uh, scientific field, mm -hmm. um, and also um, being with patients uh, in those hard moments of their mm -hmm. lives mm -hmm. have been always, you know, uh, a call for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was why I chose this field. Right. Okay. And so tell me a little bit about um, some of the things you're most interested in, which is a solid tumor oncology, what's, what's, what is that kind of definite? I mean, isn't cancer, can most people think sometimes cancer is cancer, but there's blood cancers, there's solid tumors, and there's other things like that, right? And that's correct. So um, uh, we have blood cancers and the rest, like colon cancer, mm -hmm. pancreatic cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, the others other than um, blood cancer, we call them solid tumor oncology. Okay. And that's kind of where you've specialized your area of, of, of work? Um, yes, so I'm a hematologist and oncologist, so I see um, uh, various uh, different um, uh, blood disorders, including benign conditions, mm -hmm. anemia, bleeding disorders, clotting disorders, as well as all type of cancers, which mm -hmm. include blood cancers as well as solid tumor cancers. And uh, personally, uh, I'm most interested in solid tumor oncology. Okay. Over at Memorial Cares Cancer Institute, what's kind of a, a regular day for you when you come to the office? You're seeing patients, you're meeting with the teams, things like that? That's correct. So um, we see patients uh, in the hospital as well as in clinic. Some patients who come, uh, they are newly diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. They come for treatment. Some are uh, already on treatment, and we follow these patients very closely uh, to be sure they don't have any side effects. There isn't any change in uh, labs uh, that uh, we need to pay attention to and uh, change uh, and adjust the treatment plan. And some patients, so they already completed their treatment and they come for follow-ups, which is also very important to mm -hmm. be sure that cancer does not come back. But management of cancer requires a multidisciplinary approach. Right. So um, we collaborate uh, with other um, specialists. We work with them very closely with surgeons, uh, radiation oncologists, mm -hmm. um, genetic specialists, palliative care team, and other um, supportive groups as well. So part of our time actually is spent behind the scenes and, right. uh, in um, attending um, tumor boards, uh, mm -hmm. other meetings and conferences where we discuss the patient's uh, cases with other members of the multidisciplinary team uh, to be sure each patient receives uh, the most appropriate treatment. Um, and there are a lot of you know, phone calls, messaging, and mm -hmm. um, right. we need to supervise uh, the 
um, infusion room where, pa where patients receive uh, chemotherapy, um, uh, being in constant communication with our chemotherapy nurses, and, mm -hmm. and so on. So, I mean, let's say a, um, a patient newly diagnosed and you're having the tumor board. Um, when you get in that room, there's an advocacy probably process that goes on, oh, what's the best approach? Is it surgery first? Should we do chemotherapy first? Should we try radiation first? And so, you know, is that, can those discussions kind of really kind of get to that pinpoint, okay, here's our approach and here's why it's the best approach for this particular patient? Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. And so, what what is that what is that like when you get into the room? Uh, do you find you know the advocacy is the probably the most important part of that in terms of what's the best and, and why why would we do surgery first or why and that people kind of explain those approaches? Um, um, because uh, treatment of cancer depends also on the stage of the disease, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that how extensive is the disease? Okay. Is the tumor only found in one location or multiple locations? Right. Is it possible to do the surgery? Is it better in this specific case to do that? And also uh, there are radiologists, pathologists review if we have any questions about um, if uh, this area is also a cancer, looks like cancer or not. And then everyone, you know, we all talk together. So in this specific case, mm -hmm. what is the best approach? Yeah, so that people, patients should know there's a, there's a team of people watching out for them. It's not just the one <laughs> doctor they may be talking to, but they, you come from those meetings and you say, here's what we've decided, right? So, I, yeah, so you have, you have a certain confidence when you walk in and talk to a patient. This is, this is going to be the best approach. I've talked to every specialist in the, in the place, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, what are some of the latest kind of advancements in diagnosis? Everybody wants, oh, what's the cutting edge? Can I get into a, 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 you know, a research or test you know, protocol? But what are some of the things that you guys are doing over there at the Cancer Center that's kind of like the newest treatment? Um, the newest treatments, um, I should mention, uh, for example, immunotherapy. Mm -hmm. um, so unlike chemotherapy drugs that are classic um, anti-cancer drugs and uh, they are toxic to the cancer cells and uh, mm -hmm. kill the cancer cells directly, um, immunotherapy drugs, uh, they actually help the patient's own immune system to recognize the cancer cells and destroy them. Okay. And uh, we also have targeted therapies, which are very individualized uh, treatments based on the very specific characteristics of the cancer cells that the patient has. And uh, if we find a, an abnormality, a mutation, and we have a drug that is known to be effective in the presence of that uh, a specific mutation, then we can use that drug to treat this cancer, regardless of what has been initially the um, the origin of the tumor. Okay. If it has been lung cancer or prostate cancer or other type of cancer. Mm -hmm. Now, with the genetic sequencing that you can do in, in these areas for a drug, is that part of the immunotherapy treatment? When you do the genetic sequencing, you kind of what what the cancer is made up, and then you attack it in that way. Um, uh, so, um, genetic sequencing is a newer, of course, uh, technique um, and uh, is the foundation for immunotherapy uh, as well as targeted therapies okay. um, because we do offer these type of treatments in a specific cases. So mm -hmm, we need mm -hmm. to know the characteristics of the tumor cells okay. and that's done by um, next generation sequencing that is done in very um, specialized um, uh, labs and um, through a very sophisticated, precise mm -hmm. techniques. And those can be very a lot less impactful than just overall chemotherapy, which can be so kind of devastating to the, the physical health of the, the patient as, as well, right? Yes, that's true, that's true. And um, this technique is actually coming um, um, to the uh, field of uh, screening now. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so if a patient, for example, has had uh, already treatments and we are um, concerned that maybe there is a residual disease left or uh, later on if we are concerned that um, cancer may be back. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, 
the, this next generation sequencing these days can be also done on the blood specimen because if the uh, genetic material from cancer cells, uh, they are found in the blood, then they can run the same tests uh, on the blood specimen, which is also um, uh, very uh, fascinating these days. Amazing, fantastic. Well, doctor, thank you so much for coming in. Saddleback Memorial Care, uh, great. Great work there at the Oncology Center, and obviously you, uh, you are on the cutting edge of what's going on over there. So thanks so much for sharing this latest information and being here with us. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, when we come back, it's time for Sports Corner. Stay with us. Welcome back to this Friday's episode of Sports Corner. I'm Cole Young, and this past week was chaotic in the sports world, so I'll get right to it. Starting in the world of college football, we had the conference championships this past weekend, which determined the final four teams that will enter the college football playoffs. Washington was able to hold off an Oregon comeback and defeat the Ducks 34-31 to earn the Pac-12 title, which also might be the last Pac-12 game ever. Number eight, Alabama shocked the world and upset the number one ranked Georgia Bulldogs. It was Georgia's first loss since falling to the Crimson Tide in the 2021 SEC Championship game. In between those defeats, the Bulldogs won 29 games in a row, two national championships, and an SEC title last year. Michigan shut out Iowa to complete their undefeated season. Florida State also kept their undefeated record intact after beating Louisville for the ACC title, and Texas blew out Oklahoma State in the Big 12 title game. The world waited with bated breath on Sunday for the committee to announce which four teams would be entering the college football playoffs on New Year's Day. The final four teams were Michigan, Washington, Texas, and Alabama. Michigan and Alabama will square off in the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day, while Washington and Texas will be competing in the Sugar Bowl. Florida State became the first undefeated Power Five conference champion to be left out of the playoffs, which led to some understandable outrage. Florida State has been playing with their third-string quarterback the past few weeks after a tragic, possibly career-ending injury to star quarterback Jordan Travis. This, unfortunately, did play a factor in deciding to keep Florida State out of the playoffs. The Seminoles will now face the other school who felt snubbed by the playoff committee, the Georgia Bulldogs, in the Orange Bowl on December 30th. Some of the other major bowl games that I'm looking forward to are the local LA Bowl at SoFi Stadium, where UCLA will take on my alma mater, the Boise State Broncos, on December 16th. USC will be representing Southern California in the Holiday Bowl against Louisville on the 27th. This year's surprising team, University of Arizona, will look to cap off their impressive season with a win over Oklahoma in the Alamo Bowl. Notre Dame and Oregon State will play in a solid matchup in the Sun Bowl. Ohio State and Missouri are set to battle in the Cotton Bowl. Ole Miss and Penn State make up the Peach Bowl, Oregon will face Liberty University in the Fiesta Bowl, and Tennessee and Iowa will head to Florida for the Orange Bowl. That's a lot of bowls to cover, but that's only about half of them. Bowl season starts on Saturday the 16th and ends with the national championship on January 8th. While college football is wrapping up, we still have five more weeks of regular season NFL football before the playoffs start. There were some surprising losses this weekend that shook up the current playoff picture. While the Eagles still remain the number one seed in the NFC, they will have to fight hard to remain in that seat after an embarrassing 42-19 loss to the two-seed 49ers. Brock Purdy threw for four touchdowns, while Debo Samuel had three and Christian McCaffrey added one. The Broncos' winning streak came to an end after a last-second interception thrown by Russell Wilson that sealed the loss to the Texans 22-17. The biggest shock was the Packers defeating the Kansas City Chiefs 27-19 on Sunday night bringing Kansas City to an 8-4 record after their third loss in the last five games. Packers quarterback Jordan Love put on a stellar performance, throwing for 267 yards and three touchdowns en route to a victory. Here's a look at the current playoff picture. The Packers snuck their way into the NFC wildcard spot with that win, but the Rams, Seahawks, and Bucks are just on their tail. The Eagles, 49ers, Lions, and Falcons still remain the division leaders. In the AFC, the Dolphins have made themselves comfortable as the number one seed, with the Ravens, Jaguars, and Chiefs rounding out the remaining divisional leaders. The Steelers, Colts, and Browns currently hold the wildcard spots, 
with the Broncos, Bills, Texans, and Bengals just a game or two out. I went 3-1 with my picks last week, bringing me to 29-15 and 15 on the season, which is about 66%. Not bad, but let's see if I can secure a few more perfect weeks to bump that percentage up. In the coming weeks, I'll revisit my playoff predictions from the preseason and see how close I was. Just as a sneak peek, I was very wrong. <laughs> this week, I'm going with the Ravens over the Rams, the Jaguars to beat the Browns, the Broncos to get a win over the rival Chargers, and the Packers to continue their hot streak with a win on the road over the Giants. Last week, I explained the new NBA in-season tournament. While I may not have made it crystal clear, the one thing I reported accurately was that the knockout round did indeed start this week. The Celtics and Pacers started off the bracket Monday afternoon, with the Lakers vs. Suns and Pelicans vs. Kings facing off later on Monday night. The Bucks and Knicks then finished off the first round on Tuesday night. For the East, the Pacers eliminated the Celtics behind Tyrese Halliburton's first career triple-double, and they moved on to face the Bucks in the semifinals. The Bucks breezed past the Knicks in the first round, dropping a 146-122 victory while shooting just over 60% from the three-point line. LeBron James had a 31-point game as the Lakers barely outlasted the Suns 106-103, and they joined the Pelicans in the semifinals. In the quarterfinals, the Pelicans upset the Sacramento Kings behind a 30-point game from former Laker Brandon Ingram. Both semifinals matchups were yesterday, and the Lakers and Pacers will face off for the inaugural in-season tournament NBA Cup. Each player on the winning roster will receive a $500,000 reward. Tip-off is tomorrow night at 5.30 p.m. on ABC. While it does seem like the World Series just ended, baseball season will be here before we know it, and the free agency rumors are already circulating. Of course, the man at the center of all these rumors is Angels two-way star Shohei Otani. Other than the Angels, the teams that are said to be all in on the Otani sweepstakes are the Los Angeles Dodgers, Chicago Cubs, Toronto Blue Jays, and San Francisco Giants. Otani is expected to be looking for a $600 million contract, which not many teams can afford. Outside of Otani, Padre star Juan Soto was officially traded to the New York Yankees on Wednesday. The Yankees also received outfielder Trent Grisham from the Padres as part of the seven-player deal. In exchange, San Diego received right-handers Michael King, Johnny Brito, and Randy Vasquez, starting pitcher prospect Drew Thorpe, and catcher Kyle Higashiaoka. This deal was speculated across the league for several weeks, but became official late Tuesday night. While I am biased to the NFL free agency season, this MLB free agency period is going to be historic because of the possible movements of players like Otani and the trading of Soto. Over in the golf world, this past weekend, world number one Scotty Scheffler posted a final round four under par 68 on Sunday to post a three-stroke victory at the Hero World Challenge at Albany Golf Club in Nassau, Bahamas. But Scheffler's performance might have been overshadowed by the return of Tiger Woods. Woods, competing for the first time since withdrawing from the Masters in April, finished 18th in the 20-man field on his return from injury. While it isn't the result Woods was hoping for, it's still incredible to see him back on the course playing a full 72 holes. Speaking of unsavory results, the Anaheim Ducks finally ended their losing streak that I had mentioned last week. The Ducks beat the Nashville Predators on November 14th, then proceeded to lose eight straight games. But that streak ended when Anaheim was able to pull out a 4-3 win over the Avalanche in shootouts last Saturday. But they then picked up right where they left off, losing 3-2 to Colorado on Tuesday. They will next face Winnipeg on Sunday. While the past season was rough for our SoCal teams in hockey, baseball, and basketball, one team has been representing us well. In the MLS, defending champions LAFC have gone back-to-back -back as West champions, earning a comfortable 2-0 win over Houston to punch their MLS Cup ticket. They are now one match away from becoming the first repeat winners since the 2011 LA Galaxy. LA outscored their opponents 8-3 throughout the playoffs. In LA's way of a second straight cup stands the Columbus Crew. Columbus advanced after a matchup for the ages, winning 3-2 in extra time Saturday evening at TQL Stadium over arch rival FC Cincinnati. The heavyweight matchup between LAFC and Columbus will be this Saturday at 1 p.m., live from Lower.com Field in Columbus, Ohio. That about covers it in the world of sports for this week. As always, thank you for joining me on this week's episode of Sports Corner. I'm Cole Young. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next time.
for a change of scenery? You don't have to play golf to enjoy all that 19 Restaurant and Lounge has to offer. From a delicious breakfast menu to our delectable lunch and dinner specials. At 19 Restaurant and Lounge, there is something for everyone. Relax with your friends and family and take in the beautiful view from our spacious patio. Or enjoy a cocktail and appetizer in our lounge. 19 Restaurant and Lounge is a great place to socialize, enjoy a meal, or simply take in the view. Join us seven days a week and experience Laguna Woods' exclusive dining experience. Well, welcome back. I uh, hope you enjoyed Sports Corner. It was a good one as always. Uh, let's talk movies now. We got our big Friday movie, There Will Be Blood with Daniel Day-Lewis. This is honestly a fantastic classic film. I love this film. I actually teach film history at St. Anna College. I'm thinking about including this one in uh, the list of movies that I play. It is uh, about uh, based, based loosely on the book Oil. And uh, it's about Daniel Day-Lewis. He is this uh, oil silver miner who becomes an oil man. And it's really a, just such a classic um, like character study in greed and family and your values and, and, and things like that. And so many great themes. Uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, Paul Dano, directors Paul Thomas Anderson. And really just a classic, great movie. Um, it's not for everybody, but it's, it's a little bit of violence, a little bit, a little bit rough, but it's, it's a terrific movie. There Will Be Blood is brought to us by Hogue Medical Center. It's going to be on at 2 p.m. with subtitles and 6 p.m. without the subtitles. And then, of course, Saturday's movie, Gran Turismo with Orlando Bloom. This is actually kind of an unbelievable true story. Uh, this kid from England, and he uh, actually played video games and did um, simulated driving in the cars, and he actually became a... a, a, a uh, Formula One type driver, and uh, he world he was this world class gamer who became this uh, amazing driver, and so it's a uh, based on that, and uh, it got uh, like I said, uh, Orlando Bloom stars in it. It's a cool kind of biopic on that one. It's going to be on at 2 p.m. with subtitles, 6 p.m. without the subtitles. It's brought to us by uh, Saddleback Memorial Care. So stay tuned for that one on Saturday. All right, let's take a look outside and our weather. It's going to be pretty nice weather this weekend in the 60s for the most part, as we go into to uh, the 70s on Sunday and then we cool down again as we get to Monday and uh, another cool day. So we've got some varying temperatures still going on with San Andes coming and going. But for the most part, great weather out there and enjoy your weekend. That's going to do it for this edition of This Day. Saturday we have City of Hope and Harvard Eye Associates, so stay tuned for that one. That's going to do it for this edition of This Day. I'm Michael Taylor for all of us here at Village Television. We hope you make this day a great one. Welcome to OCI Care, Laguna Woods' premier laser and premium cataract surgery center with Dr. Vias. I just wanted my cataracts removed. It was pain free. I was so impressed because I was so frightened to have it done. After surgery, I was able to use my eyes immediately. It was a miracle, really. It's just been wonderful to be able to see everything, not having to wear glasses. It's even better, actually, than he said it was going to be because I saw instantly. 